Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about two different types of things. We're going to talk about power and recommendations for your government. We're getting near the end of our project here, and what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the best government to take to our committee meeting to make sure that when we set up this government, we are setting it up correctly. All right, so getting started. Reminder, we have a quiz Thursday. It's quiz 1.1. The study guide's been distributed. I will send it back out via Twitter and text tonight just to make sure. Um, we're going to review power versus authority real quick because it's important to remember that we need both. And we're going to talk about why. And then finally, we're going to get to power structures and finally recommendations today. So the, the government definition is the system in which a state enacts and enforces the policies that it has created to maintain social and economic order. Our government's sole purpose is to maintain social and economic order while preserving those four types, uh, excuse me, those four roles of government. We talk about power. Power is the ability to do something. Authority is the right to do something. We need to blend it for our government to function properly. And that's very important for us to remember because if we are not blending our government power and our authority, something is missing. We can have all the power in the world, but if we don't have the authority to act on it, then it's meaningless. And we can have all the authority in the world, but if we don't have the power to enforce it, it is meaningless. You need both for yourself to be able to function as a government. So getting into today's stuff, we're going to talk about a confederation first. The definition of a confederation is it's a union of political units for common action in relation to other political units. All right, pretty kind of complicated there. Um, characteristics would be central government that deals with the common threat in currency issues. You know, so when we talk about what we're talking about here is we're talking about these political units that come together for common action, all right, but not really much else. And it may be common action in dealing with somebody else, um, you know, deals with a common threat like Great Britain and currency issues. Like, why does North Carolina have a dollar and Pennsylvania have a dollar? Why don't we have one dollar? So a prime example would be the Articles of Confederation of 1781. All right. That failed. That failed miserably. We wrote the Constitution because of how poor the Articles of Confederation was and how much it did not work in the American society. Another confederation would be the, the European Union, where we have uh, European nations kind of in, in a confederacy with one another uh, to deal with certain issues. Uh, and then we have that common currency for most of the Eurozone countries uh, called the Euro. Next up, we're going to talk the federation. The federation is when political union is characterized by a union of self-governing states with a constitutional division of powers. Characteristics would be federal systems work for the common interest uh, and will strive for similarity between the states. So ultimately, we're looking for the general will, and it's what involves the most action. So the similarity between the states would be exactly that. It would be every state treated equally. In the United States, for the most part, every state is treated equally. We all have the same rights and such, which is why the United States is such a great example of a federation. Another example would be the Russian Federation, which is a bunch of Russian states kind of in a federal uh, system there. Now, that might not be the best example because their government's probably not 100% fair and open like ours, but it's there nonetheless. India and Mexico also follow similar uh, power structures. Next, we're going to talk about the unitary government. Unitary government is a state government as one single unit with a central government delegating powers to other parts of the country. All right. So when we talk about that, what we're talking about is a central government that reigns supreme with local government serving no function for the most part. All right. We may see the local government being involved in something every once in a while, but more than likely, we're not going to see them involved in too much. Examples would include Ireland, the United Kingdom, France, St. Lucia, and Japan. All right, I throw St. Lucia on there because I have been there. There is one central government. Now, that's a small example. We talk about a country like France. That's a large example where the central government makes the decisions that affect towns and local municipalities. Now, they have some power in those local municipalities, but they don't have a tremendous amount. And what really comes is from that. All right, so now I want to talk about recommendations real quick, some essentials that I would recommend you include in your government. First type of thing I want to remind you guys of um, is the separation of powers, the representative government, and the Constitution. Those are the three topics we're going to take a look at. When we talk about separation of power, we're talking about powers are never granted to only one person. All right, duties are assigned to many different people, and there are checks and balances to control each other. Think of the United States in that sense and the English Bill of Rights. So the Constitution lays out Article 1, Article 2, and Article 3. And in those articles, it lays out the checks and balances that we talked about last week. 
Next, the representative government. Not everyone has to participate fully in government, but have officials that participate for citizens. So maybe in the United States, we select representatives to go to Washington, D.C. to help us make decisions. And we select representatives to go to Indianapolis to help us make decisions. All right. And we see that happening. So this would be English Parliament, Congress of the United States, or even the Congress of Indiana. All three of those are great examples. Last but not least is the Constitution, which is the formalization of the social contract between the people and the government and the powers that the government can have all laid out in one document. Now, it's really important that we take a look at that and think about that in the sense of everything that's going on um, with that. The Constitution kind of sets at, acts as a guideline. Right? Constitutions protect citizens from government, guarantee rights, and provide rules for the government to function within. And it's really important that we take a look at all three of those because all three of those are essential functions of a properly functioning government. Last but not least, the examples would include Constitution of the United States of America as something that sets out with this. Now, I, there's no English Constitution, so there's no way for me to use that as an example. All right, We have one of the oldest written constitutions in the world, um, and what we know from it is that we have made changes to it about 27 times. All right, So when we take a look at it, it's, it's pretty much held true the way our government functions. Now, it's interpreted differently each time, but it's not necessarily changed in order to meet those uh, different needs. All right. I want to thank you guys for watching today. Um, what we're going to finish up class with is a question about the characteristics that you think are important in a government. Um, probably use a lot of this knowledge here. And then you guys will answer that question and we'll be on our way today. Have a great one. Take